Well, Elaine, it's uh, it's kind of a mixed bag. I mean, people are very are happy that uh, things are settled down in terms of COVID-19, uh, but there are a few cases out there, and this is causing people to be very cautious. You know, there's this uh, overwhelming desire to be with your loved ones, especially for the migrant workers who uh, compose almost a third of China's total workforce. Uh, for them, uh, going back and, and you know, re reaffirming the family ties very, very important. Uh, this year, though, due to, you know, uh, you know a lot of work in, uh, needed, especially at manufacturing uh, companies who are paying more, a lot of them are reconsidering and as staying home. And, you know, this also extends to the foreign community here. Um, they're not going anywhere. I don't, it's very hard to get out of Beijing and you contemplate that you might have to turn and do a quarantine which would really, uh, you know, means isolation either in a hotel or uh, thereafter at home. Right. Is the risk worth it? Um, you mentioned, and as we heard in the story, one company is giving extra bonuses, extra, extra bonuses to stay and work. And the government also has new guidelines making it harder to travel, as you mentioned. So it's not ideal. Um, are you finding that migrant workers and others are just hoping to find other ways to celebrate Spring Festival? Well, they are. I mean, the companies are stepping in. They're making sure that, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a, some sort of festivities uh, based around the, uh, the actual company itself. People, of course, make friends at their company. So it's the best they can do, you know, given FaceTime and um, all the things you can do over, over the Internet. Uh, there will be contact, but, you know, it's not the same. But, you know, we've faced a very, very difficult year. People have basically been uh, locked down for a large portion of that. So they've gotten used to this kind of new reality. And rather than fighting in and saying, oh, we're going to protest and, you know, not wear masks and things like that, people are quietly observing it. Uh, they want to be cautious. And uh, it, it's a very, very different atmosphere. It's, it's not exactly sad, but people have kind of resigned to the fact that, you know, circumstances are beyond their control at this point. You mentioned uh, how many migrant workers make up the population in there in China. How has COVID impacted them? We know that many got stuck in transit last year when the lockdown started happening and restrictions first hit. But tell us more about the virus's impact on them personally and, and also financially. Well, you know, obviously uh, a lot of them ret uh, returned home last time uh, for the last uh, spring festival. And then, you know, the pandemic hit. Uh, there was a very hard shutdown. They could not return. Factories shut down. Basically, uh, China, you know, just took the pain for the short term in order to address the COVID-19 situation. But that mean meant lost wages for a lot of these people. At this point, they're interested in recovering what's unique about China as compared to Europe and U.S. is it's not a hand-to-mouth economy. Uh, even the poorest rural workers, the reason that they might uh, they go to other cities and places is they can earn more money. And when they do, they save it. They don't uh, just spend it frivolously. Uh, so as a result, what you're, they're doing is trying to replace a lot of their savings. Also, it's had a change in kind of how the, the migratory patterns, the number of migrants has uh, decreased by over 5 million. And, you know, what you see here is some of them have decided that they would take their savings and their chances and open up businesses around their hometowns, uh, a little less hectic, uh, closer to family. Also, for many who have children, uh, this is an opportunity to, you know, reassess and see where they're going. For others, the lure of more money in the cities, manufacturing, has been uh, too strong and they have returned.